counting you down to the closing bell. As you can see, just about 41 minutes or so left to go. Take a look at where we stand in the markets. Talk about volatility. We were lower by 1%. Technology just turned higher. And indeed, you have a SOX index. It's still up about 1.8%, the clear outperformer on the day. But you have some elevated volatility as well. You're punching up about a one, uh, one point or so to about a 34 handle. Anything above 30 starts to catch our attention when we think about volatility. The staples are actually big underperformers today. Uh, despite having some record performance relative to discretionary back in April. And then Clorox, of course, as we think about some of those staples, pushing forward to some of those quarterly results after the bell weaker as we head into that print as well. It is time now, as we always do at this time of the hour, for Options Insight. As we mentioned, just about 45 or so minutes away from that closing bell. And really want to use the time and the opportunity to get up to speed on the day's options trading. Joining us to do that, Kevin Kelly, the CEO of Kelly ETFs. Kevin, talk to me first about sort of this heightened volatility. What is the 34 handle on the VIX telling you? Yeah, it's, it's telling you that we, we could be getting to sort of a, uh, a max, uh, vol level in the interim and short term right now. What you want to do when you're talking about volatility is look at multiple different indicators. And so on the good side, we're near the second standard deviation for VIX, which would be 36. Also on the good side, realized volatility. We're actually almost near one year highs, um, at a 26 level. So it's up 10 points since, uh, April 21st. So that's that's on the good side. On the bad side, though, you know, one of the things that we're concerned about is that the VXN, right, mm. that's the NASDAQ 100 volatility is around 40. That's not even close to two standard deviations away. So there's still some more technology volatility uh, creeping through. So that's what we're kind of concerned about. On the good news, though, the the the, the uh, volatility curve inverted where you actually had three months lower right. than spot. So that's what is actually that telling you? Because a lot of market participants were commenting on that and saying that's sort of signs of that big capitulation and the big bottoming out that we had on Friday. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just one indicator, right? So it's just telling me you need to take it in relation to all the other ones. You can't harp on one because we've seen that these days uh, that the volatility it tends to be episodic. And what it tells me is that actually sector correlations are coming in and saving the market mm -hmm. because you're seeing actually technology has decoupled from healthcare, it's decoupled from energy, it's decoupled from staples. So what it's actually telling me is that there are going to be sector winners. It's not telling me that volatility is bottomed. We're talking a lot about correlations, Kevin. I think we have a great chart and you talk about some of the individual versus the sector names. How do you look at that? Some of the individual correlations as well. Yeah, so if we go back to Staples, which is having a tough time today, we're actually seeing outsized put activity where there's about four times the amount of puts being traded versus calls. And one of the reasons why is it's actually exceptionally sensitive to interest rates. And so when you take a step back and you look at where you're allocating new 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 capital to work in the markets or rotating sectors, you could go into an energy uh, sector, which is very low. It's a probably 4% of the overall S&P 500 and, and go there. And, and seek some refuge and and uh, where you're not correlated to tech as well, the big bellwether. Okay. So that's really what we're seeing. Kevin, we're showing a trade up on the screen. I started the segment talking about the big underperformance, big outperformance, I should say, of staples relative to discretionary that we'd seen really on the most on record going back in April. We're also taking a look at the HYG, which we could do high yield on this program all the time. How are you <laughs> thinking about some of the bearish trading within your trades? Yeah, so so what you're seeing today is that you know the, in the in the options market where people are actually putting money to work, eclipsing three percent is really concerning in the high yield market, and so we we've reached that those levels uh, come close to them, and now now that we've eclipsed it, you know you're starting to see real concern in the fixed income markets because high yield has been a great place of refuge. Actually, you've seen spreads in the high yield market to treasuries not blow out, and so uh, eclipsing three percent now you're starting to get. Get some opportunity cost um, in there. And, and so that looks very bearish for the high yield sector mm. going forward, according to today's market action. Really appreciate it. Kevin Kelly, CEO of Kelly ETFs. Really appreciate it for joining us for Options Insight today. He talks about high yield. We leave you with full faith and credit, a 10-year yield, 2.9924. This is Bloomberg.